Today on Visual Studio Toolbox, you're going to see how to make your bots not look ugly. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Sam Bazoo. Hey, Sam. Hey. This is part two of our two-part conversation on bots. In part one, we had kind of an overview of bots. We talked a little, about, a little bit about what they are, a little bit about the bot framework, saw a couple simple examples. Today, we're going to go a bit more in depth into a bot you're going to show. And um, people may have noticed that the UI you used in the previous episode was uh, bland. I was going to say basic. <laughs> <laughs> I was not going to be judgmental. But yeah, it was kind of bland and boring. Yeah. Um, you're going to show us ways we can make them a lot more interesting. Sure. Um, so all right, let's go to it. Uh, let's roll. Thank you so much again for, uh, for having me. Uh, so let's uh, switch streams and let's talk about conversational UI in bots. Um, so we talked about what bots are. Mm -hmm. They're essentially apps, but they need to be a little smart um, with all the intelligence behind the scenes uh, in the cloud. And then uh, your user doesn't really care about how uh, you get that intelligence. To him or her, it's all about how do I use this bot? Right. Is it friendly enough? Is it visually appealing enough? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's some of the things that we can talk about. So uh, once again, my name is Sam Basu, and uh, at SAMIDIP, that's my uh, social handle for most things. I am a developer advocate at Progress, so I deal with most of the Tilaric side of our tooling, and also a little bit of uh, Kendo UI, which we'll talk about. Um, so uh, turns out bots are just like any other apps. Mm -hmm. They need to have a good user experience, otherwise it falls a little short right. of expectations. So uh, we talked about how bots can be created, uh, either locally or uh, on Azure or other platforms, and then you could, uh, you'd very likely use a bot framework to kind of get started, Microsoft being uh, the most uh, popular one, but there are other ones. But no matter how you build your bot, it's, it's all about that user experience to that end user at the very end. So uh, to that end, uh, we have actually been a little busy with this over the last one year mm -hmm. or so. So uh, just a little backdrop, uh, we are Progress and we make some of the tools that developers uh, love over the years. Uh, Tilaric is, uh, is a brand that we have Hopefully, most developers uh, know us as Tilaric. We make all sorts of .NET tooling, mm -hmm. smart and polished UI for web, desktop, mobile, you name it. Um, so it really is any platform. And uh, with, with Xamarin now, you can take your .NET code to all other non-Microsoft platforms yep. as well, iOS, Android, you name it. So it really is for any platform. That's all of our uh, .NET tooling. And then uh, about maybe five or six years back, uh, Kenda UI came, uh, came along. Kenda UI is our uh, front-end JavaScript UI tooling. Mm -hmm. for all types of web applications and uh, mobile web applications as well. Uh, when I actually started with Tilaric, it was simple. Uh, back <laughs> in the good old days, Ken do you, it was just back a jQuery. In the good old days when it, it was It was just simple. a jQuery-based <laughs> library. And you know, I mean, jQuery gets yeah. a lot of flag these days. People say it's dead. And it's, it's fine, really. I mean, if you look at how many enterprises use jQuery, I think it's fine. Uh, but I mean, Kendo UI is a classic example of how the web uh, has evolved and mm -hmm. how our tools have evolved. Um, we thought jQuery was a safe dependency to take, and, and most people use it that way. Uh, but we have wrappers for everything. So you can use Kendo UI to uh, ASP.NET uh, 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 like MVC, or you can do ASP.NET Core. We are rendering the same HTML and JavaScript on the client side. And then in the last uh, couple of years, we've been, we've been busy building components because it turns out the JavaScript world likes opinionated SPA frameworks. Right. So things like Angular, React, and Vue. So we make components uh, for all of these platforms. So uh, make your web applications however you want. Bring your framework. And Kay. to us, it's all about rendering the UI. So with those two things, Telerik and Kendo UI, uh, for the first time, we are actually able to do something that's kind of cross-cutting all of our products, uh, both on .NET and on JavaScript. And uh, this is what we call conversational UI, kind mm -hmm. of in theme of what bots do. It's conversations. We're trying to put a more humane uh, UI in front of it. So uh, conversational UI is our uh, big effort to kind of help uh, put a polished UI in front of bots. So essentially, the idea is to have UI that is platform agnostic, so we don't care whether you do .NET or whether you do uh, Node.js. Mm -hmm. We don't care if it's web, desktop, or mobile. It's the same UI everywhere. So it's consistent. Uh, the APIs are consistent for developers to hook it up. Because if you are building a bot uh, framework, uh, I mean, you have built your bot, but then you want to have a client-side uh, look for your web applications and then your mobile. 
you don't want right. them to be substantially different. That kind of looks awkward to mm -hmm. your customers. So you want it to be looking the same, and that's what we can strive with, uh, with some consistency. Um, so when it comes to conversations, a lot of the times, uh, bot frameworks will kind of help you out, but to the end user, these UI controls are not just about what's visually appealing, it's also the continuity of your conversation. When I say, um, what pizza do you want? What do you want in your pizza? If I kind of make you type everything, like pepperoni, this, that, right. and that's not a good experience, right? So uh, by nature, we humans are very good at selecting things rather than having to type them in. Mm -hmm. um, so we will kind of help you out with different types of pickers and things that can help kind of get that r user response that much quicker. So to the user, he feels like, oh, I'm just click, 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 and I'm done. So it's part of that conversational flow that we are also kind of aiming to make it better uh, for our users. And, and so I noticed uh, that you've got um, conversational UI for WinForms, for mm -hmm. WPF, yeah. so, which I guess kind of makes sense because the bot's essentially a service yeah, running service. in the cloud somewhere um, that your application is talking to. Uh, again, we said over HTTP. Yep. So then that would kind of imply that it doesn't really matter what the front end is, no, right? We doesn't. we do a lot of talk, you know. Oh, you have it in Skype, you have it in Teams, you have it in Slack, mm -hmm. but you could just as well have it in uh, WinForms, WPF, mm -hmm. ASP, exactly. yeah. right? And, and and this is the appeal for enterprise developers who are building right. line of business apps. So you don't always have to go chase the uh, fluffy things in the cloud. This can live in WinForms mm -hmm. and WPF. It's just a thing in that's embedded okay. inside of your uh, inside of your apps that helps you automate workflows inside of your enterprise. Right. Good. Yeah. So then I guess the, the question that I'll have that you'll, uh, um, I want you to answer, not necessarily right now, but before we stop, is conversational UI for bots, and it's a picker that shows me pepperoni, sausage, et cetera, which we've been doing in our UIs since long before bots were invented. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between a you, you'll sell me a picker I can use in WinForms. You'll sell me a conversational picker that I can mm -hmm. use in WinForms. What's the difference? The, the UI is not all that different. Okay. It's how it's presented as a part of a conversation that's different. Okay. And for us, it's making sure that UI is consistent. Because, uh, I mean, we, we have like grids and charts, things that are common across web, desktop, and mobile. We've mm -hmm. been doing this for years. But this is also uh, an opportunity for us to do uh, very distinctly uh, different UI that is consistent across WPF and Xamarin and ASP.NET. Okay. So yes, some of those uh, things, and, and this is part of the reason why we are building conversational UI, because uh, to your point, drop-down lists and calendars and grids and charts, we have these things. We have yeah. had these things for, for years. Now we are putting it in chats inside of conversational uh, chatbots. Okay. So developers, if you are having to uh, throw something at the user to have them pick something or select a date, uh, do this, choose this, you don't have to reinvent the wheel altogether. Mm -hmm. We already have the UI that you can just render. Okay. So that that's what we're doing. And um, uh, again, I, I like the list of things that we down support all the way from jQuery to yeah. WPF and uh, ASP.NET. Uh, Xamarin, I'm a big fan of because you can now do this in iOS and Android. So it, it's kind of all across. So let's look at modern UI for chatbots. All right. The basic idea is very simple, and we just give you some of the UI that kind of helps you drive those conversations. So let's jump out of our slides and look at some code. Well, first thing is we're going to start here. Um, we have this landing page. Uh, Tillery.com forward slash conversational dash UI. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, landing page that's going to tell you everything about what we built. So it's modern UI for chatbots, um, and it's platform agnostic, all of those things that we said. And right in here, we have demos and documentation. So choose your platform. Uh, don't even bother about the things that you don't care. Just drill into those demos, drill into that documentation, and see how it works for your platform. Okay. Of that's it. Now, um, to break down what this is, uh, we, we write a lot. Uh, this is URL that we uh, normally use, tillery.com forward slash blogs. That's our blogs uh, page. Um, so uh, I wrote this article which kind of helps uh, break down what this is. So any uh, chat conversation that you see has a bunch of pieces to it. First is it's a two-person conversation, you and a bot. Right. right? So it has to have an author. Uh, so these are some like plain old POCO objects that we are throwing your way. 
Uh, I'm going to talk about these mm -hmm. things from a .NET perspective, but it's the same exact idea if you go to JavaScript. It's just objects that we are creating. So every author has to have a name and an avatar, so we can nicely depict who's saying what. Okay. And then uh, there's messages. Messages is what you send back and forth with your bot. Uh, just text messages uh, with, with the author. And then we have this concept of items. Uh, there's a collection, which is essentially an observable collection. So you can bind it to the UI and you uh, it auto-updates. Mm -hmm. But the items collection is what your chat conversation is all about. So no matter what be your backend, when you're having a chat conversation, it all your messages gets, get pumped into this items collection. That's what holds your entire chat conversation. So that's an interesting uh, concept for us because that's where we are going to stick in all of our UI. And then, uh, uh, to your point, uh, we have had these UI things for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now we are just putting them into chatbots. So things like date pickers, uh, time pickers, again, uh, you will have some of these things, but they're not baked into bot framework or other uh, bot engines uh, uh, entirely. So date pickers, time pickers, item picker, this is kind of a generic thing, so you can pick whatever parts of uh, a sandwich you want to pick, whatever pizza toppings you want. Mm -hmm. And then we have a concept of card pickers, which is essentially a hero card, which is a rich, richer experience. So this, are, this is what kind of makes up uh, uh, kind of the parts of our conversational UI. Um, it, it is basic, but what you can do with it is quite a bit. So let's kind of dive into this and see what this uh, looks like. So I'm in uh, Visual Studio for Mac. You can get the exact same thing on Visual Studio on Windows. Let's open up uh, a solution. I'll, I'll show you some code. So this here is uh, a Xamarin. And we'll have a link to this yeah, absolutely. in the show notes. Yep. So what I'm showing here is uh, this is a, a super simple Xamarin solution. So we are building um, iOS or Android apps with C Sharp and XAML. But the ideas and the code is going to be the exact same whether you do this in WPF or WinForms mm -hmm. or uh, with JavaScript on the web side of things. So in here, uh, kind of what you expect from a Xamarin solution, this is, is uh, a Xamarin solution. This is a .NET standard library, so mm -hmm. it's shared between all platforms. And in here, I just have iOS, but you can have Android, you can have UWP. You can have any other framework that Xamarin Forms supports. We don't have any platform-specific code in here whatsoever, so it's, everything is in here. So this is our shared project. If you look at the dependencies uh, from NuGet, it is uh, just two things. It's Xamarin Forms, which is because it's a Xamarin Forms app, and then Telerik UI for Xamarin. Okay. And uh, you don't need the whole thing. We're just going to pull out the chat conversations part of it, so you can just get the NuGet that catered to that. So in here, uh, all I have is main page .xaml and then main page .xaml .cs. So one UI uh, front end with .xaml and then the code behind for it. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at uh, the .xaml part of it first. This is super simple. We have a content page as is expected from any Xamarin Forms application. It holds all our content. And within that, I have a few namespaces in here declared so I can just say rad chat. That's just the one placeholder. That's our chat uh, front end that's going to hold our entire conversation. Okay. Okay. Now, at this point, we are kind of abstracting away the chat conversation's front end, what the user sees, with what's behind the scenes. So we can talk to this uh, uh, through other ways in which we can talk to our bot. So this is just the UI part of it is what I'm showing you. And then uh, what I have defined here is what's called a repeat bot, kind of exactly what we did from the Azure templates or uh, any of the bot builder SDKs, when you do an echo bot, this is what mm -hmm. we are doing. It's a repeat service. So when you receive a message from the user, I simply uh, um, turn around and repeat that message back to the user. So it's an echo thing that we are doing. So now let's look at uh, main page XAML.cs. So in here, I have a few using statements. And then in here, I'm defining my bot service as the repeat bot service. So it's an echo bot. And then when the bot receives a message, I have a, um, a function that kind of takes the message and translates it back and uh, gives it back to the user. And that's my bot author. Uh, it's just called my bot. Uh, interesting thing to keep in mind when you're doing like mobile apps, uh, images are important. This one has a little avatar. It's got a bot face. And that avatar, those images, those need to uh, live in the platform-specific projects like so iOS and Android. author lives where? So the author is two-part. One is you, the user. No, I mean the class, author. That's just a property on the chat. Uh, object. Okay, so if you show us that, is that built into yes. the Telerik UI, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So when you when you got that namespace, it, it kind of is ah, automatically okay. in so initiating a rat chat. 
Talaric.xamarinforms.conversational yeah. UI. Yeah, so this Got rad it. chat thing that you initialized okay. has the author, has the items collection, and that's where we're going to start. So let's and start. And are you also abstracting the bot framework you're using? You could, yes. Right now, this has no bot framework whatsoever. Right. This one is just purely client side. Okay. I'm just trying to show you a demo with an Echo bot. Got it. Um, so we have the bot author, and then uh, we can do things to it. This one is, notice how this is the chat. Uh, placeholder, do that, we can add things to it. We can mm -hmm. say, oh, uh, this bot author starts out the conversation saying, welcome to our chat, and then we'll uh, take it from here. So let's, uh, let's kind of run this and uh, we'll see how this works. So this is a super simple example that kind of shows you uh, the different aspects of how to use uh, the, the UI. We're going to wait for the iOS simulator to spin up, and it starts up. Okay, notice how this is just a simple iOS app, uh, but this bot face, this is our bot author. Okay. And these images do need to live in platform-specific projects because that's how the app packages are built. So this one here is, this is uh, just an echo bot, so I can say hello. And notice how like this is my author. I can set up myself as a nice avatar, which I don't have yet. But this is the bot saying hello. So okay. it's li just literally um, spitting back whatever I say. So it's an echo bot. So that's just the basics of it. So we look at uh, we have looked at how to set up an author and how to have an items collection, and then we have a repeat bot service that's just relaying what we are doing. So that's just step one. Let's look into some uh, things, and I'll I'll kind of break this down so it's easy to follow for uh, one thing at a time. So let's look at dates. Spark this up. If you had to have uh, a conversation where you are um, asking the user to pick a date, again, obviously don't have him or her type it in. Uh, we can throw in a little calendar. Again, these are things that we have already as native mm -hmm. controls on iOS, Android, and, and UWP and other platforms. We can just now throw this as a part of the conversation. So this is just a date picker. Uh, I can go uh, left and right. Uh, I can have properties on these things like min date, max date, what's my present selected date. And when I select something, uh, the bot can say, oh, you chose that. Okay. So it's just simple. So that's just dates. Um, let me turn this relaying thing off so it doesn't keep repeating what we just said. So let's look at uh, time, for example. We can run that. So this is part supposed to be part of a chain of conversations. You kind of string together a conversation. I'm just trying to show you the UI just separately, one at a time. So this is just a time picker. Uh, you just pick your time and it says what, you, what time you mm -hmm. chose. You get to pick the time intervals and what your min and max times are. Super simple. Uh, but it's, it's hard to create these things by hand. So let's comment that out. Let's look at uh, pizza toppings. This one here is going to be a picker. We are trying to order pizza. Here mm -hmm. are your options. And you just uh, do a single selection or multiple selections, and you go from there. Just Kay. simple pickers. Now, while we are doing this, let me show you a little bit of the code, which is going to be very similar um, uh, to how we do these pickers, but just to kind of take a look at one of them. Uh, for example, this one here is the date selector, the date picker that we just saw. Uh, the uh, the rat chat that we threw in uh, in our UI already knows how to handle a collection of items. To that collection, we're going to throw in a date picker. Notice how we can give it a min date, max date, whatever, and then we can add that collection inside of our items collection, mm -hmm. and that's how we do it. And once that um, excuse me, once that date context changes, once the user does actually pick the date, we can remove that and say, hey, you picked that date. So the same exact concept for time. Uh, this is the pizza uh, topping selector that I showed you. This one being, uh, uh, it's an item picker, so it, it has an item source property. So data binding, so you can bind this to whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, from your Poco business object, from your models, whatever it is that you want to bind it to, you bind and you render, and then you have either a single selection or multiple selections. Uh, let's look at uh, the next thing uh, that's interesting. I'm going to open up uh, selecting conferences. So let's run this. This is where you get to do slightly more uh, sophisticated UI, and I'm still showing you a basic part of it. Uh, but these are called cards. 
So essentially, uh, you are uh, asking somebody to select something, but you're giving them a richer experience. So what conference do you want to go to? Uh, right now, we're in Redmond for uh, VS Live Redmond. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Robert was speaking uh, just a while back, uh, but if you wanted to go look ahead, uh, we uh, do a conference in Sofia, Bulgaria. It's called DevReach. Or if you want to go to Microsoft Ignite. So this is, uh, uh, it's a picker, but it's a little more smarter. It's a little more richer experience. So these are called cards, and you essentially select whatever one you want. So if I select that, you'll say, I selected VS Life. So this is working because we can uh, pull off a few more uh, advanced pickers. So let's look at uh, selecting conferences right here. So when it comes to selecting a conference, I have a picker item, and then I have a method that returns get conference cards. Right? This conference cards uh, method returns a list of cards. This card context is what we are building. Mm -hmm. So there are two types of cards you can return. One is a basic and one is an image card. This one is a basic card. So it has a title, it has a subtitle, it has a description, and then it has actions. And there can be multiple actions, but essentially we are trying to select a conference. And these all have support for commands. So you can do this in an MVVM way and not just okay. have it uh, hard-coded in the code behind. But essentially, this is the list of cards that I'm returning. And once you do select a card, we can have a command here that says, oh, that's the card that you chose, index off. And then I'm, I can say, you selected that. So mm -hmm. just a very basic card concept. And, and this you can utilize in any how you want. You build it and you bind it to an item source, essentially, right. however you want. So that's just a look at the very basic side of the UI in a project that does not have any bot framework dependence whatsoever. Okay. This is just locally hard coded. So let's uh, let's take things a little uh, uh, a little more advanced and let's look at another example. Yeah, because I mean, at the moment that's not really a bot. No, no, it's just UI <laughs> that we're okay. playing around with. Okay, so uh, this thing that I'm going to show you, in case uh, anyone wants to go ahead and get the code, you can get this code for whichever platform that you're on. Um, I'm a big fan of Xamarin these days, so if I go into UI for Xamarin, that is our UI uh, for Xamarin Suite, has uh, lots and lots of polished UI that we build, uh, 70 plus UI for Xamarin Forms, Xamarin iOS, mm -hmm. all of that. If you already have a subscription, then you already have the code, but if you don't, you can hit this big download free trial button. And that's going to get you a trial download of all of the UI. Um, okay. And then uh, I'm literally showing you that trial. So if I go into downloads here, this is the trial folder that you get when you hit that button. Uh, we give you the binaries, and we give you some examples. And this is a project that we give you. It's called the Quick Solution. It kind of uh, steps you through how to use our UI in a real world solution. Okay. So all of the code that I'm showing you, any, anyone can play with it. Just hit the trial button, and you'll have the source code for this. It's also on GitHub. So uh, let's open up this application, which is a little more advanced. And we're going to run this again. This is, uh, once again, a, a Xamarin Forms solution. So while it's spinning up, let me close this. So you notice that this is just QSF, and then uh, there's an iOS part of it. There's mm -hmm. also an Android UWP, which I've taken out. And everything that you see is really just coded up entirely in the .NET standard library. There is no platform-specific dependencies whatsoever. Uh, and if you go into examples, we have examples for all of our controls, like autocomplete, bar charts, uh, busy indicators, data grids, list views, a whole bunch of things. What you want to look into is this thing called conversational UI. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the chat. So let's let's look at this. Uh, we have the iOS thing spin up here. Notice how this is a trial, so I'd say, hey, you're using a trial. So this is an app that you actually don't have to get all this source code and kind of build this yourself. And again, this is running locally? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But you don't have to do this. If you have an iOS or an Android or a UWP device, you can go to your respective store and search for Telerik UI for Xamarin example. This is the app that we actually have put out in the store. Okay. So you don't need to install anything, just install the app and play with it so you get to get a feel of all the UI that we're throwing in uh, before you actually start incorporating this in your okay. app. So this has all of our controls, bar charts, uh, autocompletes, barcodes, uh, busy indicators so you're not letting the user just wait in vain, uh, calendar controls, all of that is kind of nicely mm -hmm. uh, uh, demoed here. And you also get the source code as to how we do any of these things. So let's go back in here and what we want to look at is this conversational UI. So uh, we have a few scenarios. Uh, I like the travel assistance because it's it's fun. Uh, you can also do insurance uh, and healthcare. So for each of these things, we actually have it hooked up to bots that are running in the cloud. Okay. 
So uh, I think the health insurance is hooked up to Google Dialogflow. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the travel assistance because, it was, if you can notice, it's connecting to Azure. Right. Because this is running a, a, a Microsoft Bot framework that's already hosted in Azure. And okay. it has, it is actually using the form flow. So it is going to uh, ask you for a list of things as a rule to entice all of the things that it needs to kind of make a reservation. Yep. Okay. How about that? So this is travel assistance. Uh, you and me are both tired. We need a vacation. <laughs> right? That's important stuff. So. Uh, time with friends, why not? Uh, that's a little busy indicator. Uh, so what you notice right out of the gate is uh, we are not, uh, we're trying to minimize how much the user types. Right. This is part of your usability and your user experience. We want to do click, 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 and done. Right. So uh, what type, uh, time with friends, select a start date. That's the calendar that I just mm -hmm. showed you. So now you see that the same exact calendar that I showed you in a very simple non-bot framework uh, scenario can now be hooked up to bots because the bot framework behind the scenes is saying, trigger the flow that entices the user to give me a date. Right. So we see that and we throw in the calendar control. Uh, so you and me, we want to leave as quickly as possible. Let's do this Friday. How many days? Five days. Sounds how, good. how many people? Two, just you and me. All right, so this is again a picker, right? So same Ooh, pickers that we saw. <laughs> Let's do Spain. <laughs> All right. Okay. Can't go wrong with any of those. Yeah. So now what it's doing is uh, what we just saw in a just a little bit more richer uh, experience. So these are called adaptive cards or hero cards. Mm -hmm. So same exact idea. We are returning a bunch of cards. Each card has title, subtitle, description, and it has an image. Right. right so that's where you see the images. So uh, you can kind of scroll through this. So you see how easy this is to uh, kind of hook up. Uh, and let's say we... Let's go this one here. Uh, Barcelona, uh, would you like to do uh, travel arrangements? When I say yes, again, more pickers, more things that can automate how the user inputs their uh, their side of the story okay. in a bot framework. Uh, let's do Lufthansa, okay. And now it should almost be done. It's gonna say, hey, uh, this is what you're looking at, this is where you're going. Uh, for a party of two, that's your total cost. Uh, this is your contact person for travel, and now you're done. Right? Cool. So we, we didn't even have to pay for it. Exactly. I love are, it. Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be my best vacation yeah, ever. Exactly. We're <laughs> leaving the uh, day after tomorrow. So just a quick experience of how we're integrating with a bot framework, mm -hmm. a bot that's sitting in Azure. Yep. But what you're looking at is the client-side aspects of it. So if you remember uh, how we created a bot in Azure, and we didn't have to do anything. The bot, right. we could test the bot right away. It's uh, the web chat that's mm -hmm. kind of built in into Azure or bot framework. What we are looking at right now is something called direct line. So uh, when you have a bot that's deployed to Azure, you can take the web chat and you can kind of embed that in your web application. Okay. But that's just the web side of the story. If you don't want that, but you still want all of the bot's features, then you use what's called direct line. And these are libraries that Microsoft makes. So there is direct line for .NET, mm -hmm. and there is direct line JS for Node.js. So what this will do is essentially uh, give you an abstraction over the RESTful endpoint, so you're not doing it over the web view, but you're still doing the exact same things that the bot does. You right. are essentially intercepting the messages as it goes out to the bot and comes back to the bot, and then you're throwing the UI on top of it. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what it is. So that's travel assistance. Uh, I mean, I would encourage everyone to kind of play around with these things. There's insurance, there's healthcare. Uh, this healthcare is uh, very popular because it kind of automates uh, getting an appointment with your doctor, mm -hmm. which as one can imagine, that's not a very difficult thing to do. If your calendar is correct, then you right. can choose an appointment. And, and many hospitals and healthcare uh, institutions are starting to do this. And then again, as you're, as you're creating the bot itself, you can decide um, how much of it's kind of wizardy filling out a form versus how much of it's, uh, how much you need to train it to be able to React to what you do right. here. So the the demos that you just showed were kind of simple in the fact, in the sense that they're linear. It's one right. flow, right? Right. Yeah. Where are you going? When do you want to leave? Etc. It's pretty much the same questions over and over right. again. Right. Um, but the UI is obviously tremendously helpful, yeah. and it's right. it is a bot living up in Azure, so it can be called from a number of things, and then yeah. you can decide that you might need it to um, be able to kind of go off script if you go off script. Right. right. And that depends on your bot. Right. How you train it. Right. So when your bot calls into Louis, you train Louis to say, here are the different ways in which I can say, book me this reservation. Right. 
and then uh, I mean in, and if you have built any apps in in cognitive services and Louis it's very simple it's an interface that says uh, and and Alexa and and Siri they all do the same thing so mm -hmm. give us all of the ways in which the user can say this right and they're going to break this down into intent and right. parameters but and if you're if you're starting goes. out with bots it would be a good idea to build a more of a linear one to get the hang of it, right. to get the feel for it, right. and then you could, once you understand that, start exploring. Right, right? back so and forth. So this, health, this uh, travel one says, would you like to book a vacation? Yes, where would you like to go? Here, um, yep. versus one that says, what can I do for you? Exactly. I need so to get out of here. Open, open right? At that point, I need to get out of here. What does that mean? Right. right? Does that mean I need to call an Uber to go right, home? Exactly. Does it mean I need to book a vacation? vacation exactly. What, is, what exactly right. does right. that mean? So, to right. your bot, those things that it can do are commands. Right. And how you, which command you invoke mm -hmm. is dependent upon how well your bot is conversing in a natural right. way. Right. But I think one of the key takeaways here is that it is, it is a bot. The framework of being a bot is this conversational thing right. where it walks can, where you are, are having a conversation with the bot, whether it's linear or completely right. orthogonal or, yep. or yeah, exactly. And I mean, a, a, yeah, as geeks, uh, I mean, you you and me speak to developers, but as, mm -hmm. as geeks, if we can avoid maybe talking to a human sometimes, we'll just do <laughs> talk to a computer. Always. Yeah, this is what <laughs> the bots are good for. Now, let me let me show you another thing. I mean, uh, so all of the code is right here. I'm not going to waste time kind of going through it, but you can see that um, uh, for for this one here, we are clearly uh, hooking this up to an Azure bot service. That's our uh, key, yep. and 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 we go from there. Uh, this is our XAML, which is going to be a little verbose, but at the end of it. Um, you, uh, we can. We are using some custom template selectors, but uh, all of this comes down to a rad chat, okay. which is the basics yep. of what we just saw, and then cool. it has an items collection and so on. Now, if you want to do this same exact thing, or maybe a similar thing to this, um, let me show you another uh, example. Maybe uh, let's look at uh, Kenda UI. So you see that we have the same insurance, travel, and healthcare. Let's do healthcare actually. So what you're seeing here is the same exact experience. Now mm -hmm. it's just embedded in a web okay. view. So let's do a book a checkup. Uh, again, a picker. So there is a bit of a picker that's kind of built in the bot framework. Other frameworks actually don't have very good pickers. But mm -hmm. uh, I mean, traditionally, what we have done is like when you look at Xamarin or ASP.NET, there might be controls that are built in but we can kind of put it on steroids. We can give it much more of an API flair as to how developers want to style it, how they want to bind it, right. all of that. So this is a picker, but again, it's, it's a little bit uh, fancy. So let's say I want to go to a family physician, and this one will come back with a list of cards, right? So okay. hero cards. So I want to go see this doctor and choose a date. And, and again, reason, you can yeah. store states, so this thing exactly. knows who you are and knows who your gastroenterologist is, exactly, and, and do all of that. You could pick a new one, or you could go to your previous one. It knows exactly. when you went. So, yeah, you can absolutely uh, play around with storing the state, right? And and, and, and the state is stored in what's called middleware uh, for lots of bots, because bot framework, it's by nature, it's a stateless, restful service, but it's got to go somewhere mm -hmm. to find that state, and that somewhere could be Cosmos DB, could be. SQL Server. Yeah, matter. you can, from inside your bot code, you can call yeah. any yeah. data store. Exactly. Right? So if it you are coming from a heavy enterprise background, if you have like services, uh, web services that are the middleman between your client apps and your database, this is what it is. And right. you can hook up and you can go anywhere you want from yeah. there. Right. So, I mean, you can turn it into, you know, a basically becomes a semi-personal assistant, right? Yep. Where it knows who you are, right? And therefore it knows about you. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And, and those are things that kind of help you differentiate your app, make it more personal, mm -hmm. make it more useful. Because I mean, right. you and me are getting old. Maybe some of this is uh, too fancy, but if you look at this objectively from an enterprise standpoint. Getting old, you're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> so there are uh, there are little workflows that you can automate, and that's right. where the cost savings are. And enterprises are starting to realize this. Yep. Uh, uh, big airline companies they have bots, 
uh, when you go to their websites. The, that, that speaking agent thing, it's all about what can we do before we actually throw a human mm -hmm. into the conversation. Right. So if you're having issues with something basic that we know how to fix, maybe a human doesn't need to be involved. You could uh, potentially build one that uh, helps you fill out your expense report. Yeah, well right? I mean, nice. we have an app, <laughs> right? I go in, yeah. I can see all my outstanding charges. They're there, and then it, you know, walks me through a step. You could have yeah. uh, a bot that does the same thing. Exactly. It's going to ask you what expenses you want to right. um, include in that report, and mm -hmm. you go from there. In yeah. Include your attachments, your uh, your images, and you right. go from there. Okay. So lots of different things you can think of um, in terms of applications, but you see that this is the same uh, the travel uh, bot that we saw, yep. except now it's on the web. Um, and it's exactly the same thing. So let's uh, give it a date for some reason. It's not like the date picker here. Uh, so see the pickers? It's the exact same UI. And this yep. is what we were shooting for, to right. have that consistency consistent UI across. Um, right. all across. And this was going to give you all of those uh, hero cards again, and you mm -hmm. choose, and you're done. So uh, I would encourage everyone to kind of uh, look around and see what works for you. This one here is clearly connected to the bot framework. And it talks about the direct line JS. So essentially, uh, this is from Microsoft. And if you look at the code, this is super simple HTML. This is jQuery, uh, Kendo UI that we're looking at. Uh, this is what does the magic, direct line JS. We are actually okay. including this uh, so that we can have an interface as we talk between our client and the bot framework. Right. So this is the interceptor that lets us go send messages and then bring messages back. And mm -hmm. it's from Microsoft, and it works for Node.js and, uh, and .NET. Right. So what essentially we are doing is uh, throwing in UI that is smart. Uh, let me do the conversation UI. So again, that's the landing page. Yep. So uh, what we have tried doing for the first time, uh, I mean, we have a big portfolio of products across mm -hmm. web, desktop, and mobile. And it's not often that we're able to do something consistently all across. This was an opportunity, and we right. seized it. Uh, because we can throw that con uh, consistent UI, a modern UI, for all types of chatbots, and it does not care what your bot framework is. Right? Cool. It can, it can be anything. We just want to give you the UI that we already have for different platforms, now included as part of your chat conversation. That's awesome. Yeah. This has been a, I've really enjoyed this uh, two part introduction to bots. I think um, you've done a good job of kind of you know, demystifying it and, and landing that it is absolutely something that you can do regardless of the type of apps you're building because it again it's just a service yeah and it's living just an app out, out in Azure somewhere exactly it doesn't need right. to be something nebulous only meant for like the hip and the uh, the startups it right. can very well serve your enterprise needs yep. if you have a valid use case for it okay yep cool so that's all uh, I had for modern UI for chatbots right. uh, once again uh, my name is Sam and that's where you can find me and it's been an honor. All right, uh, thanks so much. Fun to be here. All right, hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.